Hello and welcome to my latest video. So today for you I've got a look at vintage British Panther paperbacks. Now Panther was one of those publishers which I've always loved. I've never gone out of my way to collect them but when I've seen them around you know when I've been hunting and jumble sailing and in charity shops if I've seen an old Panther I've picked it up and I've amassed a fairly good collection of them including some quite uh, quite nice uh, collectible editions. So that's what we're going to have a look at today. So sit back relax and let's get to it. Okay then, so off we go with my earliest Panthers um, that I've got in my collection. And uh, they certainly published quite a bit of sci-fi in the early days. This one's actually dated 1952. It's got A.V. Clark and H.K. Bulmer, cybernetic controller. One and six, it's in a right old sorry state this one, but I believe that's the earliest one I've got. And I've got a couple more in this sort of format. This one's actually numbered number 17. The other one, I couldn't actually find a number on it. So Underworld of Zello, <laughs> John J. Deegan, hardly a classic of its type. Also 1952. And then this one, which was uh, the same author again. This is number 32, Amateurs in Alchemy. These are like early, uh, early sci-fi titles. One and six was the cover price. Certainly not um, printed on great paper, not compared to say the penguins or pans. And this is another one. This is actually quite nice condition. That same author again, slightly different format. These were almost like pulp size, you could say. And this is more traditional paperback size. This one's a much better condition, number 39. It's a uh, Antro the Life Giver. <laughs> so sort of 50s B movie uh, B movie science fiction. This one's copyrighted 1953. There we are, Panther Books. Part of Hamilton and Company. And as I said in the introduction, I've never really gone out of my way to collect Panther books, but when I have come across them, I do tend to pick them up, even if they are sort of lower lower grade condition, simply because you just don't see them. You hardly ever see these. Um, and I uh, I certainly haven't gone out of my way to buy them. So when I do see them, I grab them in, in pretty much any condition. Uh, number 57 here, The Venom Seekers, Brian Berry. Now this is another sort of slight change in format um number 86 and if you see it's nothing like the original books um got the panther and hamilton logos on the side hj campbell brain ultimate so it's another another sci-fi one it looks pretty good doesn't it for his secret plan these living bodiless brains <laughs> um this is like a bound one, bound fiction. What do they mean? What does it all mean? Is this a special edition or something? I'm not 100% sure, but um, it's nice. It's nice all the same, that. So let's just pop, pop these spine on. We've got a lot to get through, I have to say, so I don't want to hang around too much. Um, this is an early John Burke, um, The Dark Gateway number 94 and it seems all my early ones are all sci-fi I don't know if they're all sci-fi or if um Panther did publish war books because I've certainly got lots of war books later on by them oh no, this one's in a in an awful state um number 109 the metal eater I mean literally fall into bits but what a great cover I don't really want to throw that one away but it's actually got no back cover so <laughs> as I said I pick them up in any shape now, that was number 109. Now there's a bit of a jump, and the jump is to 501. Now, I have a funny feeling, like some of the other publishers of the period, where they stopped their numbering and just jumped forward 500 to make them appear somewhat more respectable, shall we say, and more established on the market. Um, and this is uh, the first war one we've come across, which is Spycatcher. 
There are plenty of war ones to come. This is March 1955 for this uh, Panther edition. I am a, a fan of war novels. I know not many people collect it as a genre, but I don't mind it at all. I particularly like escape stories. They're my, uh, my favourites. Um, 503, Pipeline to Battle. And obviously this is not that long after the end of the Second World War. So these sorts of memoirs are getting written and uh, they were popular. At 504, this is a nice copy, isn't it? They saved London. Agents stole Hitler's secret weapon and smuggled it to England. Generally, the back covers on these were pretty nice. Ah, the, that's the reason this one's so nice. It's actually a reprint. This is a 1957 reprint, uh, so two years after the original. But such a nice nick, who I didn't want to turn that one down. Well, this is a thick one. With Rommel in the desert. Personal aid to Rommel. Well, that's interesting, I bet. Following the Africa Corps. Got a bit of illustrations and a few bits and bobs in there. So it's a nice non-fiction title. Which is good. When was this? Printing History. Now published. 1955 by, uh, by Panther. Sunk. Look at that. Sunk. <laughs> Midget subs, suicide torpedo pilots, the Japanese underwater war. Wow. 509. 5.11. Officially dead. Another one, uh, the prisoner the Japs couldn't hold. So Second World War. Memoir again. 516, Sound Barrier. Breaking the Sound Barrier. Five one seven, Frank Owen. And it's the Eddie Chapman story. Don't know who Eddie Chapman was. Five two four descent into danger, Scotty Young. It's a real uh, slew of um, war titles at the moment. Five four two jumping on a little bit here, Prisoner's Bluff. Two German POWs escape to the Japanese lines. A bold exploit, racily told. That looks good, doesn't it? Nice copy of that one as well. 548, Fortress to Brook. So having a real run of um, war titles, aren't we? 558, I Bought a Star. Okay. 570, Very Ordinary Seaman. One of the finest accounts of war at sea ever written. Apparently. And then 573, A Spy Has No Friends. It's true, apparently. And we're starting the next pile. Ah, so this has got a picture cover. Death Strikes in Exotic Surroundings, Port Afrique. A Columbia picture, so that was a movie tie-in. Hmm. Two shillings. 1956, starting a new pile here. Lower Deck, 596. I've had a couple of copies of this. Um, really like it because it's got a PEF cover. Sam Peffer, one of my favourite um, of the authors, British author, British illustrators, I should say, of this time. And uh, he's famous for his sort of semi-photorealistic characters. And that's because he used to take lots of photographs and then um, base his, uh, his cover paintings on the photos that he took. Really, really, uh, cool. Uh, 607. Cool, that's a lovely cover, isn't it? The Valley of the Shadow. Six years a prisoner of the Gestapo under sentence of death. Look at that. Cy Webb did the cover. Beauty, that, isn't it? Nice condition as well. I mean, it's like virtually unread. If only they were all like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a beauty, really nice, that one. As I said, I've never gone out of my way to collect these. They've just sort of come my way. Um, and I'm a sucker for them, I'm afraid. <laughs> 608, Marshall Without Glory. I was uh, missing a bit of the spine. Six twenty five Escaper's Log, the classic escape story of World War One. Thrilling and exciting. Well, absolutely. I love First and Second World War escape stories. Um, the First World War, War ones, which Penguish, Penguin published a few during the Second World War, um, are so quaint. It's almost like it was a gentleman's agreement not to escape. Second World War ones, not not quite so. Um, six two seven. This is a big thick one, isn't it? Calculated risk. Six thirty two. Death and the bright day. Mary Fit. There's a name that rings a bell. Mary Fit. Where do I know her name from? She had something published by Penguin. 634, Panther, Book of the Month, number 10. And this is Gideon Goes to War, Leonard Mosley. I've seen that one a few times. Uh, this is a real lovely one. I absolutely love this. 635, and this is um, Alcatraz. Alcatraz Island Prison. So, the dramatic story of the notorious US Federal Penitentiary by James A. Johnston, the first warden of Alcatraz. Great, isn't it? Great cover as well. Great back cover. That was something Panther did take a bit of a um, time to do, is, is, is make a decent back cover as well as a front cover. 1957, this one. It's very nice, isn't it? Uh, 644, Cry Korea. I guess this was contemporary. The Korean War, I guess, must have uh, just about started. 645, the execution of Private Slovik. They put Slovik against a wall and shot him. Why? Why indeed? I don't know. I'm going to have to read the book, aren't I, to find out. 649, Operation Rangoon Jail. A doctor's story of captivity under the Japanese. And this is another one that is like mint. It's like it's never been read. I do remember, I think I was at a paperback show a few years back and I did pick up a, a batch of war titles and I wonder if that was one of them where they were not dear, they were maybe just two, three pounds each. But everything was like, pristine condition i couldn't believe it um so i bought the lot across all different publishers i think there was a lot of really nice mint four square titles and things like that so um i think it might have come from that collection um this is 652 three corvettes nicholas montserrat one must be one of his early ones 659 the cretian runner he fought on in occupied Crete under the grinding Nazi heel. Dear, oh dear. It's another nice cover, isn't it? But I can't see a signature. But I wouldn't be surprised if that was a path. It looks similar. It looks similar. Oh, I love this one. This is one of the earliest ones I've had. I had this since I was a teenager. <laughs> 663, the flying saucers have landed. Did a spaceship really land in California? And this is, a, once again, it's a PEF cover. How cool is that? I love books on old flying sources and things like that. And this is one of the ones I'd had for many, many years. Now, the next one's probably my thickest panther. Look at the size of it. 677, Away All Boats. I've had a couple of copies of this one, believe it or not. Look at it. It's enormous for a panther. It's... Uh, uh, four, just under 450 pages. It was three and six, so not cheap by any means. 1957. Yet another war title. Later on, we got loads more crime and sci-fi. Some real good, good stuff as well. But this was obviously their, their wartime period. 681. The Mouchette Diaries. 
684, Wind in the Wires, another one of uh, War in the Air by a First World War pilot. 686, the drama of the Scharnhorst, one of the greatest sea battles of World War II. Well, they would say that, wouldn't they? <laughs> a couple more in this pile, and then we're going to take a small break. Operation Waste, 687, a parachutist's account of war in Indochina. And then the last one in this little pile is this one. Well, that's actually pretty cool, isn't it? So this is 692. This is Return to Tomorrow by, well, L. Ron Hubbard, um, the creator of um, Scientology, covered by Josh Kirby. This must be one of his very early books. Um, if not his first book, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's not mint by any means, but it's certainly complete by the look of it. So let's have a look. So the magazine version was printed in Astounding Science Fiction in 1950, published in the USA by Ace Books in 1954, and then the British Panther edition in 1957. So there you go. So I guess it's the first US, UK rather, edition of this, Return to Tomorrow. A pretty nice, a really nice jacket, isn't it? Really, really nice. Josh Kirby was the artist. You could see your signature there. Went on to do all the Terry Pratchett's, but... Yeah, that's probably really uh, quite a little collectible paperback kind of one, I would think, even though it's not in the greatest of shape. Anyway, I'm just going to pause there, and I'm going to move these to one side, because I've got about the same amount again to go through with some layer tiles. Okay, so back on the uh, sci-fi now again. By the looks of it, so 696 is the transposed man, Dwight V. Swain, whoever he was. <laughs> Seven o two, they die with their boots clean. <laughs> Not they die with their boots on. They die with their boots clean. Life in the cold stream guards. Okay. Seven o six is the Black Raider. All these war titles. Some of them, and there must be some real classics in there, just waiting to be rediscovered. Uh, Seven o seven, the Marines were there. So Bruce, Robert Bruce Lockhart, heard of him. 708, Black Earth, Hans Haby. Mortalmans, he did a lot of covers for four square books. 715, The Endless Years. Nice jacket, that one. Cy Webb, and when are we looking date-wise? Let's have a little look here. 1957, or this was a reprint. That one was a reprint, came out in 1958. Another quite porky one here, 732, Follow My Leader, Louise Hagen. The Desperate Plight of Germany, The Aftermath of Nazism. 734, so uh, the, now that is a, a battle I've heard of between uh, the Hood and the Bismarck. Um, that is a famous sea battle of the Second World War. White Coolies, a grim account of Australian nurses in Japanese hands. Well, that was basically the subject of Tenko, wasn't it? Later on, the uh, the, the book and uh, the TV series, BBC TV series Tenko. So. I guess that's what that's about. Um, obviously, the uh, prisoners of war suffered under the Japanese. Uh, Seven forty, the Zeppelin story. Um, I don't know why, but I've got a soft spot for Zeppelins and uh, dirigibles. I think they're called. Um, and uh, I love books with Zeppelins on the front, and uh, this is one of them. Um, if you ever come across any with Zeppelins on. Hook me up, because um, I'm into those. House of Dolls, 758. What's that about? Uh, it's a uh, look at Nazi atrocities. We'll leave that one as is. 793, The Age of Battle, Barry Pitt. Come on, I want some more sci-fi and crime. Prisoner at Large, okay. Well, I like in a good escape story. John, John Frayne Turner. Two terrifying years on the run in uh, 
wartime Europe. That must have been tough. 799 is Periscope Patrol. Same author. So 798 and 799 are both by John Turner. Number 800 is Medicine My Passport, D.S. Matthews. Nice cover on that one, but I can't see a signature. When was this one? 1958, that one. Nice copy of that. Clear the decks. Number 802. Drama on the high seas. And really dynamic cover, that one. 805 is um, Camp on Blood Island, which was also... This is based on the screenplay of the Hammer film. Quite a brutal Hammer film. Don't often see that one around anymore. 809 is Invasion 1940. German plans for invading the UK. Which never actually happened, of course. Big, thick one. Ah, so... Uh, now, is this true crime? No, it is it is fiction. Murder twice told. Bludgeoned to death by the roadside, the mystery of the woman with the red gold hair. Bit of crime at last. 816, secret weapons, secret agents. And the last one on this stack. 824 is uh, Isaac Asimov, Currents of Space, a nice early Asimov there. Jo uh, Josh Kirby cover. I do like Asimov. Um, I think Panther published most of his early books, along with Corgi in the UK. So it first published it by Boardman in 1955, and this must have been the first paperback in 19 1958. That's a nice one, isn't it? Okay, so we're on to the last pile now. We're about three quarters of the way through. So this is 839, which is The Revenge of Frankenstein. Once again, this was to tie in with the uh, Hammer Horror film. And this is uh, quite a uh, sought-after book in its own right uh, because of the uh, the Hammer collection. Certainly one that I, uh, I very much like that. And we've got 846. And All the Trumpets. Once again, a look at Japanese atrocities during the Second World War. 861 by C and by Stealth, Burke Wilkinson. 878, The World at War, Edgar Holt. Still pumping out the, uh, the war books. 881, this is another Asimov. The End of, of Eternity. It's nice, isn't it? 1959. Yep. January 1959. That one's, so I'm guessing that's another paperback first for Asimov. Um, 882. Schwartz's Special Missions. The most dangerous man in Europe, apparently. 883, Pork Chop Hill. And this was a movie starring uh, Gregory Peck. There he is. And Pork Chop Hill was in Korea. So this is a Korean War story. Nice copy of that one. I think I've had a couple of that one. 884, this is another one I had, I've had for many, many years. Um, a cartoon book, Clementine Cherie. So this is, uh, and this was a second. This is actually a reprint. This one from nineteen fifty nine, probably quite scarce. I would think as a panther. Nine oh two, Confessions of a Special Agent. And I, my numbering, I'm only going to show up to the first like thousand or so, because after that, um, although I do have 
books in the series beyond that 905 here we are the wake up story of wake island um you could just be going on forever to be honest um and i think it's these early ones that people would be interested in um 941 battle of the ardennes so my sort of mid to late 60s onwards panthers i'll save them for another time because they're not uh not as interesting as these although a lot of the robert van gulliks are in that particular run uh 946 road inland nine eight nine details enclosed another really uh nice condition one probably from that same little batch that i found 998 the battle for salo josh kirby cover again 999 the day after tomorrow quite a nice cover there isn't it it doesn't give me an artist credit but very uh very nice jacket that one Nineteen fifty nine still. Oh nice Robert Highlands. This is one thousand and one. Not the greatest copy, as his spines will be in that, but it is a Robert Highland who I love. He's one of my favourite sci fi authors. And uh, most of his stories still stand up very well today. That was January nineteen sixty. Just a hand more, handful to go now. The mission, Dean Breelis. Another one that they seem obsessed with um Japanese Second World War atrocities, didn't they? Uh, oh, another Asimov, there we are, 1016. This is The Naked Sun. Another one of those classics. This has got a, like a laminated jacket. Nice condition copy, this one, February 1960. Rear Guard. This is one of those ones that's been trimmed. You see, it's a lot shorter than normal. 1060. One of the Fu Manchu books, Sax Roma. I do like the Fu Manchu books, actually. If you can get past the uh, obvious uh, um, nature of the, you know, they're so dated now. Um, the actual stories underneath are pretty good. A. Van Vok, Destination Universe, 1063. Another uh, Asimov, 1080. This is the first of the foundation books. That's pretty nice. Nice copy of that as well. July 1960. Escape. Yep, three years in the notorious punishment camp at Colditz. So another uh, Colditz escapee. Do you like my Colditz books? And the last one for this video is another Fu Manchu, but really, really nice jacket, that one by, uh, it doesn't say, uh, novels by Sax Roma, of course, are all the Fu Manchu books. And there's an advert for a different book on the back. That's the first time we've seen that. A little colour uh, color ad inside. And that one was published in 19, 1960. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that look at these vintage Panther paperbacks. Now, I've got stacks more vintage uh, paperback content to come on my channel, which will be coming out over the next year. So... Uh, do please hit that subscribe button if you have enjoyed the content. I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.